Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jumma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu, nasta'inuhu, nasta'ufiruhu, wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina, wa min sayyati amalina, man yaadihi allahu falamudillala, wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala, wa ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness, we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds, Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. And bear witness that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no partner. And bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amnu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun that O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah, be aware of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of submission to Allah. Allah also tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amnu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeedha yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yawfir lakum runubakum wa may yut'illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema that O oh, ye who believe, be mindful of Allah, be cognizant of Allah and say that which is right and speak the truth. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive you of your sins and whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي سُبْحَانَكَ لَا إِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ That I pray may Allah open my chest and make easy for me this task and loosen the knots of my tongue that these words may be understood and that glory be to you Allah, glory be to you alone that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Again, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuhu Jumal Mubarak. It's a blessing to be with you all to here today. And uh, inshallah today, just wanted to briefly share uh, a bit about um, the importance of good conduct, this prophetic conduct that uh, our Prophet Sallallahu had brought just as much alongside with the teachings of Islam, just as much alongside with the instructions and the prescriptions of this religion, also to exemplify uh, the model of good character, the model of excellent humanity. Um, and so uh, we'll just be going through a few of the hadith that are covered within uh, the book of uh, Riyadh al-Salihin by, uh, compiled by Imam al-Nawi um, of hadith uh, that, you know, span so many different topics and whatnot. And, and uh, in this particular uh, chapter of, of uh, this book, um, this compilation, uh, the, uh, Imam al-Nawi covers the, uh, the hadith that uh, talk about good conduct and uh, what the importance of that good conduct. And so Allah tells us in the Quran that you know Jannah is prepared for those who control their anger, who who do not give way to uh, those those kinds of emotions or to to uh, their caprices, but who control their anger, but also those who are forgiving, those who are pardoning, those who also not just pardon, but they purify themselves, they repent on their own behalf, they do that inner work, they do that outer work, but they're also uh, those individuals who are mindful and cognizant of not just all the different things that they're doing, um, but they're cognizant of the impact in which they can affect somebody and how they may negatively do something or how their actions may have different repercussions. And so they're mindful uh, of how they uh, can be in a situation. And the Prophet in, uh, in the different hadith that we'll uh, talk about consistently shows us how just as much of a part and parcel of our deen uh, are our pillars and our fundamentals uh, so too is something like good character. And oftentimes it's one of the things that gets overlooked. You know, we, we try to emphasize basic elements about good character that don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, 
um, and you know all these different things. But we we sometimes miss a lot of the gray areas in which we don't realize that we are uh, in a state of unbecoming, or we're becoming uh, unbecoming of the character, the prophetic character that our Prophet ﷺ has left behind. Because maybe we're not lying, maybe we're not cheating, maybe we're not stealing, or we're not doing any of these, uh, you know, just red line type of things. But maybe we're still being harmful in a different way. Maybe we are uh, being loose with our tongue. Maybe we are, uh, you know, going into a space in which we are uh, not controlling of our anger, our emotions in different ways. Uh, and we may be hurting people or even hurting ourselves without even realizing it because we've already just set those boundaries for ourselves that, oh, unless I'm doing this, unless I'm doing this, it should be all right. And uh, what the Prophet's hadith and narrations and advice in this particular uh, space and talking about this good conduct is one that, like I said, oftentimes will get overlooked by us because we're just in the flow of our lives and we don't maybe stop to think a little bit about how our conduct, how our everyday actions, the in-betweens of the five daily prayers, the in-betweens of all of our different ritual practices, how those have that spiritual impact on us, but also how those sometimes just kind of uh, get pushed to the side because we're not mindful of them. And so just to dive into that, the first hadith uh, shared is uh, is narrated as virtue is noble behavior and sin is that which creates doubt and you do not like people to know about it. So the Prophet is lifting up that virtue is uh, noble behavior, that uh, th this is a uh, a virtue, it's a high virtue, it's 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 a good character, um, you know, it's noble uh, in its aspect, in its behavior, its conduct. Um, but sin is that which creates doubt, that which goes into this gray area, but you want to keep it hidden from people that, hey, I'm doing something, but I want to kind of hide it to the side. And um, there's a difference between concealing our sins and 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 not wanting to, uh, you know, publicize or broadcast them versus those things which continue to uh, fester. And, and, and sin is that which creates that doubt. And we don't like people to know about it. We want to uh, hide it naturally and in and, and the good way, be able to hide it, but not be able to continue to be bogged by it, to uh, get to, to drown in it, essentially. Uh, and virtue is being able to excel past that. Virtue is being able to be of a good conduct, of a good behavior, to where we're not consumed by that sin, to where we're just absorbed in this kind of a secrecy, but that we are recognizing that uh we need we have some work to do that we we we, we need to we, we we don't just kind of steep into it to where that sin just becomes all uh just all encompassing and we don't distinguish what's right and what's wrong it just becomes the the norm for us uh, but noble behavior is something that is not sinless it's something that is not without that kind of a sin it's noble behavior allows us to recognize that we might be inclined to sin but how do we get ourselves right and so thinking about that when we don't act on that noble behavior when we don't cultivate that we very much cultivate a space that uh is is not just uh tolerant of the different vices and the different negativities that are there but just becomes a part and parcel and doesn't see what's wrong with it but as long as we have that itch in our heart that says something's not right about this we do have the inclination to kind of hide it we have the inclination to conceal it but our noble behavior inclines us to want to do better want to not repeat that mistake want to be able to excel from that again uh in the next hadith uh, abdullah ibn amr ibn al as had reported that the prophet sallam, did not indulge in loose talk or vain conversation, and nor did he listen to it, he, nor did he like to listen to it. Um, and he used to say that the best of you is the best among you in conduct. So thinking about how often it is, how easy it is in so many of our circles, whether they are at work, or whether they are at the mosque, or whether they're at any other kinds of spaces that we sometimes might take for granted. We might just be hanging out with our friends, we might be with our coworkers, maybe at home with our families or whatnot. Uh, and thinking about that, the talk that we had, the conversation that we have can be very beneficial, can be very, uh, you know, just uplifting. But at times, there's elements of those conversations that uh, really become unbecoming in a way uh, that maybe someone starts to become this topic of that conversation who's not in the room. And then everybody starts to proceed on backbiting that person or start to dogging on that person. Uh, maybe that loose conversation starts to go into another area 
that it's just of no benefit, that it doesn't serve a, a proper purpose. There's there's jest, there's humor, there's all these different things. But uh, this particular kind of conversation, it's it's a very slippery slope. And uh, as Abdullah ibn Abd al had shared that the Prophet did not like to indulge in that kind of loose talk, nor did he like to listen to it, because it's just such a slippery slope, as we're going to see a little bit when the Prophet talks about um, the tongue and what to be aware of with respect to uh, what the the kind of power that it has essentially um both detrimental but as also in terms of like the the positive power that it has but thinking about that uh, in reflecting on loose talk or vain conversation and uh, listening to it or hearing it so he was not someone who participated in it and in, in helping to cultivate it but he was also someone who did not like to be uh, a like kind of in in that in the gathering of that or like to hear it not even in the vicinity of it um, and emphasizing that the best among you is the best of you, those of you in conduct so thinking about how we conduct ourselves in such gatherings we don't have to be that awkward person that maybe like you know in the midst of a gathering like this that just feels like okay something's like gone off the rails there's certain degrees in which we can act and we don't want to feel like maybe we're the awkward person that's just like okay hey everybody let's just stop doing this let's do this let's do that um there's a way to properly redirect and re reroute different things without making things pretty awkward but thinking about in terms of at least a proper conduct the best among you is the best in their conduct how you conduct yourself in that space you know as the prophet has taught that if you see an injustice you want to correct it with your hand or with your tongue and if you can't do that then with your heart at the least you cannot participate in it at the least your your conduct should drive you to be somebody that's not an active participant but also somebody that's not necessarily needing to be a part of that situation so thinking about how we participate in these spaces but also what is the value of conduct what is the value versus what we think we're gaining from that space social connection uh this type of energy this type of things that's kind of coming about um you know whatever kind of clout that we feel like we're building with our friends or uh, our company or whatever it may be but think about what is being lost especially spiritually because what the process is showing us in these different hadith and what our tradition emphasizes is that our conduct is uh, directly correlated and has a direct impact and connection to our spiritual health and our spiritual heart. And so when our conduct is not well, uh, our spirituality is also something that is going to suffer. Abu Darda has stated that uh, the Prophet relates that the Prophet said that nothing will be heavier on the day of resurrection in the scale of the believer than their good manners. And Allah hates the one, Allah dislikes the one and hates the one who utters foul or coarse language and uses that. Thinking about in this aspect here that nothing will be heavier on the day of resurrection, the day where you know you 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 will be looking for uh, anything and everything to try and benefit you, but most of it will not be of any avail. And so there, there will not be that opportunity to try and reset the clock a little bit, try and change things back. And, oh, if only I did this, if only I did that. But the heaviest thing on that day uh, of resurrection in the scale for that believer in judgment will be their good manners, will be their good conduct. And oftentimes we sometimes take it for granted that uh, we've got to do all these different things. And not to say that we, we don't prioritize and make a part and parcel of our rituals. This is hadith is done with the understanding that someone is doing their regular prayers, is doing their fardain, is doing their, oblig uh, their obligatory acts of worship and all of these things. But the thing that distinguishes them, the thing that will really make a difference in that sense is their good character, is their good manners, that when we do those things, but we do them in a way that is harmful and hurtful to other people and is not a proper, it's not becoming of prophetic character, that it does not have that benefit for us in this aspect. And so thinking about that, uh, when we, when we, uh, when we are thinking about how do we improve our own spirituality, how do we improve our connection to our religion, how do we improve our uh, connection to Allah, how do we improve our relationship with Allah, starting with those good manners, starting with those good conduct. And we think about what does that look like? And we see different narrations from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu that as we talked about, he doesn't engage in foul talk or listen to it, was not somebody that would raise his voice in, in, in his home or uh, say, you know, some kind of like expletive or anything like that, but was somebody that was, was regulated in this aspect, but was cognizant both of the needs of the people around him, as well as the needs of him and his family. Thinking about as well that uh, the second part of this hadith of Allah hates the one who uses coarse language or foul language. And so it's very 
uh, important and imperative upon us where we're in a society where it's so easy for us to just, you know, let something slip out of our tongue or we see something on TV or we just hear it. And it's just kind of part of our, uh, you know, part of the, the lingo that is kind of being circulated and it's, it's hard to escape. I'm just thinking about that. Uh, oh, I, I it, it's not a bad word. Or like, you know, as long as I'm not using the, the F word, as long as I'm not dropping like the biggest, uh, you know, kind of like curse word that there is that uh, I'm, I'm going to modulate myself before I get to that space. But thinking about if you open that door for one thing, you start to open that door for so many other things. And even if it's whether it's just, oh, rather avoid one F bomb that's there or have multiple little small, like, you know, what we deem small little curse words that fill it up, you know, it, it, it regardless, it is doing the same amount of damage. And it's, it's what the damage is, is that it damages our relationship with Allah. Because when we think about, who would be in that company, in that divine heavenly company, in the company of the Prophet and would be the people who have purified themselves, purified and corrected themselves, not people who are perfect, people who have continued to work on trying to perfect themselves, trying to be better, trying to improve, um, but who do not dwell within that space, who do not dwell within that negativity, but are able to improve themselves and recognize that, okay, I'm, I'm doing something wrong, but I can turn course, I can do something better. In another hadith, the Prophet was asked about the deed which will be the foremost to lead someone to Jannah. And the Prophet replied that first and foremost, fear of Allah and good conduct. That you have taqwa and you also have good conduct um, with respect to your character. And the Prophet was then asked about the indulgence, which thing, which indulgence, which uh, vice in a way will take someone to hell on the opposite side. And the Prophet ﷺ had said that of the tongue and of the genitals. And so it's very important for us to see that what the Prophet ﷺ said was what's going to be that which leads someone to Jannah, the foremost thing that leads someone to Jannah. That would be their awareness of Allah, their cognizance, their fear of Allah, their mindfulness of Allah, um, that Allah is watching them and that they are aware that they are not uh, just in this world without being observed by Allah, without being accountable for their actions and also their good conduct, that these two go hand in hand with respect to reinforcing the other, that the mindfulness of Allah, the awareness of Allah is something that helps us remind ourselves to be good to that which is around us, be good to ourselves, be good to our families and uh, the creation around us to be of the highest conduct, because that is a product of that fear of Allah, that awareness of Allah, and not just a kind of a, a literal type of uh, you know, kind of a flight or flight type of fear, but a, a, a type of awareness that is cultivated, very similar to a proverb that we've shared that, uh, that is in the biblical scriptures of fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, um, that, that it's, it, it's something that uh, raises this type of awareness, it heightens your own human experience, and thinking about how good conduct reinforces that, um, because you, you, it cultivates humility, it cultivates, uh, you know, those those feelings and, and those emotions and those sentiments that are becoming and, and, and abases arrogance, abases haughtiness, abases those things that uh, separate us from Allah, but draw us near in this space because it's continued practice. It's, it's as if you're working out and you're exercising, that you, ha you have a good diet, you continue to work and exercise, they're going hand in hand, and, and you have a s awareness of wanting to be the healthiest person that you can be. Uh, and one of the things that will help really cultivate that is good eating, good exercise, good diet, all of this different stuff. And if you don't have that in your life, there's certain ways in which you can still operate, but it's going to be really hard if you don't have at least a good balanced diet or at least some type of activity going on to be able to lead a healthy life um, to do so. And think about in this context that uh, when we have that awareness, that fear, that cognizance of Allah, um, that we naturally want to and naturally should be able to cultivate those good manners that help to reinforce that mindfulness, that awareness that we start to see uh, the bounty of Allah in so many things around us that otherwise we wouldn't see because we would see ourselves in, in a prideful way or an arrogant way and see things beneath us, see things um, as above us or below us. And instead, we're able to see things um, from from that lens as 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 those who are uh, the, uh, the 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 servants of the most merciful, the Ibad al-Rahman, the people who walk upon the earth humbly, um, but who are uh, the servants of the most merciful, uh, because we view the lens, the life through that lens, that everything has come from Allah, everything belongs to Allah, 
and everything will return to Allah, including ourselves, then we're not above any of that in that sense. And also, when in the other part where the Prophet said that the indulgence which will take someone to hell, which will take them to a place of disconnect from their Lord, would be that of the tongue and the genitals. And these are two uh, organs, these are two things that that have much benefit in a way. They offer much benefit. The Prophet has said that the highest form of speech is that of a word spoken to uh, a oppressive ruler or a tyrant. So the tongue is capable of so many positive things that if you are not able to do, uh, if you want to speak out against injustice or stand up for, stand against that which is wrong, do so with your hand, do so with your tongue and then do so with your heart, um, that, that it has a lot of power. It wields a lot of power, but also we, we, we observed as in the earlier hadith, that's so easy for that tongue to be used in a way that becomes unbecoming of the believer, becomes unbecoming of that prophetic conduct and does a lot of harm in the space when, when we give in to uh, that which feels tempting to get into that conversation that's spicier, to start talking about somebody when they're not here, to make some jokes or maybe start to tell some lies just to get some clout or whatever it might be. So being mindful of the power that the tongue has, that it has a lot of positive power, but it also wields a lot of things um, that if not checked or regulated could lead to the ultimate disconnection from Allah, and especially with respect to, in conjunction, the genitals. Um, you know, the genitals being uh, you know, a, a organ that Allah has told us to, to guard, Allah has told us to be mindful of, uh, in that the positive aspect being that Humanity is able to continue to progenate, is continue to be able to spread, continue to be able to grow uh, and flourish and whatnot. But when not regulated, when not checked in this in this types of means, we see so much harm that can come about. We see so many things that are unbecoming um, that are there, and we see what the Prophet has continued to state uh, in in the Hadith about um, the disconnect that those who commit things like zina, those who commit adultery, fornication, or whatnot, have from Allah, but also those who, uh, apart from uh, in that aspect, those who commit acts of violence with their uh, private parts, those who commit acts of violence, sexual violence against others, or do all these other things, these, these things can be utilized in a way that's completely unbecoming of what they are designed for, what they are made for. And so uh, the Prophet has, has made us aware in the sense that good conduct is something that helps restrain this, helps us be mindful of that. But when we're not mindful of that, the ultimate disconnection that we can receive from Allah in terms of being put into, into hell away from Jannah is, is also to think about how easy it is for us with respect to that, which is just a part of us, our tongues, our private parts, and for those things to lead us down a path that uh, if we're not mindful, um, could be uh, completely detrimental to us. The Prophet also states that the most perfect believer in their faith is the one whose behavior is the most excellent and the one who is best to their spouses, that our faith is completely impacted and has a direct impact and correlation with respect to our behavior, that our faith can look great, like on the outward sense, it can look nice, we can be uh, pronouncing things so well, we can be reciting things so well, we can be doing our rituals so well, but it's only very hollow if that's only on the outside and the inside is harsh, the inside is not good conduct or good behavior uh, and not noble character, that it, it's, it, it's literally a very hollow apparatus um, that does not have a strong foundation and thinking about that our behavior is intrinsically connected to our faith. So if we feel disconnected within our faith, we feel disconnected from our creator, we want to evaluate for ourselves amongst other things, how are we doing with respect to our own character? What are we predisposed to? What is our behavior like? How is our relationship as our Prophet has lifted up to our spouses, to our loved ones? How are our relationships? Are they healthy relationships? There's good communication or is there not really any communication happening there? And seeing, being able to see the connection between the two. Prophet Sallallahu also has lifted up that a believer will attain by their good behavior the rank of one who prays during the night and observes fasting during the day. And these are uh, tremendous, uh, very heavily beneficial rituals um, and, and acts of worship of praying at night um, and also fasting during the day. And you think about uh, what the rank, uh, what the uh, benefit and blessing it is of having good behavior that we again 
uh, discounted here. It's easy for us to let something slip out the tongue. It's easy for us to indulge in these different things. But what are we losing when we don't in, indulge in good behavior? When we uh, don't, in, uh, when we are not taking part of humility? When we are shunning arrogance? When we are shunning pride? When we are being uh, mindful of the needs of other people when we're being polite in our demeanor, when we're helping out somebody in different ways, it has tremendous different impacts that maybe we're not associating with Islam, we're not associating with our deen or our religion, but this hadith reminds us that uh, our good behavior helps us attain those ranks, which may otherwise be uh, attained in so many different ways, but especially uh, through the highest forms of ibadah, the highest forms of worship in that sense. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ had said that, I guarantee a house in Jannah for the one who gives up arguing, even if they are right, even if they're on the right side. And I guarantee a house in, in the middle of Jannah for the one who gives up lying, even if for the sake of fun, even if for the sake of jokes. And I guarantee a house in Jannah in the highest part for the one who has good manners. So we think about the importance of good conduct, the importance of good manners. It's comprehensive. It's not just that which is our tongue, that which is with our eyes. It's with our, all of our senses, all five senses in this aspect that when we are mindful of ourselves, when we're mindful of our conduct, we're mindful of our behavior, the reward of it is that which is uh, in that spiritual sense as well. It's not just in the relational or social sense here. But to think about that if we give up arguing, even for the sake, uh, even if we are right uh, in, in, in a uh, you know interpersonal dispute or whatnot, you know, in, in certain matters of like justice or whatnot, there's there's those aspects that's like, hey, you're, you know, you're, you're obviously trying to settle something that is right and wrong. But if it's you know, you're having a trivial, trivial quarrel or an argument uh, with your spouse or somebody here, even if you're in the right the better thing being to just to 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 create the peace in a sense and and to uh, be able to think about look it's not worth it in a sense we know that we're going to continue to argue here what does that anger start to build up what does it start to uh, lead to the one who chooses to walk away from that to who chooses to say i'm just setting my weapon down my metaphorical kind of weapon down and we don't have to go forward with this or we don't have to continue to fight about this that person who's able to uh, put aside their anger, giving up that arguing has a reward in this aspect. That person who gives up lying, even when they start to see that, hey, I'm making a lot of people laugh. I'm making it, uh, it's being, it's a lot of fun because I'm creating something. And this oftentimes comes into the pitfalls of something like comedy, something like uh, telling these different jokes that might not be, um, you know, uh, terrible, might not be bad, but they're, uh, they're just kind of made off of white lies or whatnot. But to see the slippery slope, that it can be there. And what's the benefit of leaving that off and being able to cultivate something more authentic, not just in the real world, but in the spiritual sense as well. And then also with respect to the person who has overall good manners, good character, what does this have to offer um, for, yeah, for us? And thinking about as Prophet has said that the person who has these uh, good manners, this, this prophetic conduct for that person, a house is prepared in the highest part of Jannah. The last narration we'll share is that the Prophet has, has uh, related that, the, uh, as he says, that the nearest and dearest among you to me on the day of resurrection will be the one who is the best of you in manners and the most abhorrent among you. The person who will be the farthest away from me will be that person who is pompous, that person who is showy, out, egregious and everything in the aspect, very prideful, the one who's excessively talkative, who's garrulous, and uh, uh, the person who is also arrogant, that those who are arrogant, those who are the people who are furthest away, the people who are closest to me are those who are the best in their manners. Very simple, the person who is uh, good in their mannerisms, in their speech, in their tone, uh, in, in how they observe things and how they talk and how they are able to relate to people and conduct themselves and uh, check themselves in this space, but the people who will be furthest away are those who are filled with respect to this this pompous nature, uh, who are haughty, who are excessively talkative, who are prideful, or very you know uh, take up a lot of space in that sense, and those who are arrogant, who think that they're better than other people. Um, and so this is a reminder for us to think about that: how do we conduct ourselves uh, when we think about our deen? We think about our religion, we quantify all these things where we think about what does it mean to be a Muslim. It, it's, it's not just with respect to our farbain, it's not just with respect to our ibadat, our 
worship, our obligatory acts of worship, that those are just as part and parcel. But it's also about these things that make us human, these things that help us excel in our humanity, that they go hand in hand, that uh, they reinforce and re and, and benefit our ritual. They benefit uh, our, our worship. And ultimately, these two put together when paired improve and heighten and, and reinforce that connection that we have with Allah. So may Allah protect us from being a people that that may lean into a space of being haughty, that being arrogant, being prideful, being excessively talkative, being people who may be loose with our tongue occasionally, may be loose with our emotions and uh, how we talk and how we uh, are going about in this world and not being cognizant of how these things have impact within the world around us, but also in the world to come. May Allah protect us from these things, but may Allah also enable us to be a people of the best manners, be a people of the middle path, be a people of good conduct, be a people of noble character, who control their anger, who pardon others, who uh, hide those things that don't need to be broadcast into the world, who seek the repentance of their Lord, who seek the forgiveness of their Lord, who seek uh, not just the benefit of this life, but seek the benefit of the hereafter. Uh, and may Allah remind us and continue to allow us to remember uh, not just how we can be a people of good conduct, but with the mindfulness of Allah, with the healthy fear and awareness of Allah, be a people uh, that that live into that space so that we may be on that on that day uh, not just benefited by our good manners, not just our scales are overweighed by the good manners and the good character, but that our distance to Allah, our distance to our Prophet Sallallahu is completely minimal and not on the complete opposite when we don't do these actions. And may Allah allow us to be able to see this and to see it through and to remind ourselves that these are things that we work on day in, day out. It's not a one-time thing. It's something that we continue to work on. May Allah allow us to uh, be a people that will see this through and be a people that in this life cultivate this so that we may see the seeds and the fruits of this bear in the life to come. Allahumma ameen. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kantas samil alim as our Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam had prayed that our Lord accept this humble service from us. Indeed, thou art all hearing, all knowing. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasikun wa salamun ala ala musaleen wa lahamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And again, Jumma Mubarak to you all.